Hey everyone, I'm Ben, head of the design department here at 3D3P, and today's video I'm going to talk about those warped curvy chips that we like to call Pringles. Maybe I'll have some while we talk. This happens a lot, especially with hot stamp chips for some reason, because of the process. You get these warp chips that make wobbly stacks, and people have developed ways to flatten the chips. Um, which, this isn't going to be a video about how to do flattening. You probably wouldn't want me to do that because I've never actually done it before. Uh, but I'll put a link down in the description to a good thread about how to actually flatten the chips. Uh, this video is going to be about the little racks that I made to make that process a little bit easier. Uh, which there's a ton of variations of in my store, and it's kind of confusing, and hopefully this video will help clear some of that up. So to flatten warp chips, the main things that you need are some warp chips, some blank ceramic chips to use as spacers, a screw clamp, and an oven. The general idea is you put the chips into the clamp, squeeze them, put it in the oven at low temp for a little while, and let them cool down, and then they, they flatten out. And so Team Napoli on PCF asked if I could make something to hold the chips in place while trying to get them into the clamp, which was kind of tricky to keep them lined up and uh, perfectly aligned with this, the uh, ceramic spacers when you did that. So I said, sure, I could probably do something like that. So I dreamed up this product, which consists of this frame part. And then you put in this little insert. There's a lot of different types of those. It sits in there. You put this inside the clamp, in between your screws there, and then you drop the chips into that, and it holds them nice and straight while you do the clamping. And then, of course, when you're done clamping them, you want to lift it out and not put the plastic into the oven or it will melt. So, very important part. Just put the chips in the clamp in the oven. Leave these out of the oven. So one of the things I've learned from this process is that people like to do this a lot of different ways. So some people like to stack the chips so that there's a ceramic spacer on every other side in between every chip there. And some people like to do more like a sandwich where you just have one ceramic chip on either end and then let the clay chips touch each other in the middle. So my numbering scheme in the store and which I actually print on the back of the little inserts there you can see this one says 21 chips if it's an odd number then it's a setup like this this one is actually a 21 chips it has 10 of the warp chips and 11 of the ceramic spacers for a total of 21 um, the insert actually has two rows of 21 um, I just call it 21 the height of one side if it's an even number, like this guy, it is 12 chips. That corresponds to this. 12 chips is 10 clay chips and 2 of the ceramic spacers. So if it's even number, it's a sandwich. If it's an odd number, that means it's for every other spacer like that. Then the idea is you just buy whatever insert size you need. It drops into the frame here. The frame goes underneath the clamp there. Drop the chips in and clamp away. So you might be wondering what do I need the insert for? And it's really not essential, especially if you have like this one, the Pittsburgh clamp is from Harbor Freight. Um, so it's quite tall, so if you just used the insert by itself with some chips. It's not a problem. The only thing it does is that the bottom of the chips when you take it out of the clamp will be this high off of the, the table basically. And when you put the insert into the rack or the frame there, then it puts the bottom of the chips very close just above the bottom of the clamp when you take it out. So the Pittsburgh clamp is tall enough that it doesn't really matter. You can do it either way. Um, but a lot of people use a Bessie clamp, which I think is a little bit shorter than this. And the chips may actually stick out of the top a little bit if you don't have the frame to keep them 
um, centered properly vertically in the clamp. So another thing that I learned that people like to do is to use 43 millimeter uh, ceramic blanks with 39 millimeter chips just so that the spacer is a little bit larger than the chip that you're flattening. Uh, I don't have any 43 millimeter blanks but I've got these nice 43 millimeter bounty chips uh, so I'm just going to use those, pretend those are the ceramic blanks. So you can drop those in and make a stack with alternating 39 millimeter chips with 43 millimeter blanks. And so I designed a little bit larger 43 millimeter diameter rack to hold that configuration. The problem with this one was that when you drop them all in, the 39 sink to the bottom. So you get a nice gap at the top and the bottom edge, they're all lined up. So they're not centered relative to each other. If that bothers you, I came up with the rib diversion that was suggested, I think, by AK Chip on the forum, so that you drop these in and they line up. And when you take them out, they're centered relative to each other because you've got those ribs there in the rack to hold the chips at the different heights and they're on the same axis centered. Um, so you've got that, and then I also made a version of that ribbed one for the people who like the sandwich method with the even number. Remember, if it's an even number, it's a sandwich with one spacer on either side. So if you've got a setup like that, you can still use the ribbed method, drop it into there, and when you take it out, they're still centered relative to each other. So that's another option there. Um, the main difference in the numbers, so I've got some that are just half height, and you can always mix and match those. If you have a couple shorter ones, you can put them together in the frame side by side, or get a long, one longer one. So you've got 39 millimeter diameter, 43 millimeter, and 43 millimeter ribbed are the three choices. And then for the heights, remember if it's an odd number, that's every other, and if it's an even number, that's the sandwich method. Um, so hopefully that explains it a little bit better what all the different choices are and if you have any other questions uh, Just let me know in the comments or on PCF or shoot me a PM or an email uh, Thanks a lot if you made it this far. Thanks for watching and uh, let me know if you have more questions. Thanks